Hello everyone, Colin Canad here for Woodwork Web. Today I'm going to do a follow-up on the last three videos that I did, so I've got quite a lot of stuff going on today, you can see by my workbench here. Uh, first thing I want to talk about is the joint testing, and when I get a lot of requests on something I feel I need to do a little bit of a follow-up, so quickly back to the joint testing. Oh, but before I do, um, I just realized I got, it's in my spam box. I got a note from uh, Matthias Wendell. Matthias, I'm delighted you're watching our my channel. Um, wondered why I hadn't mentioned about um, the test uh, unit that I used was uh, uh, loaned to me by the nice people at Dalmax. So thanks, Dalmax, for the loan of that machine. Also need to thank uh, my good friend Danny. I don't own... Uh, uh, biscuit joiner anymore so he loaned me his um, very nice DeWalt uh, biscuit joiner so thanks to both of you and thanks uh, Matthias uh, for the jogging my uh, my memory on that let's get on to the joints the one that caused the most um, the most comments was the pocket hole joint so let's go and have a quick look at the pocket hole joint I've got it right here let's I want to do a close-up to show you where it failed and what I did with it here's the pocket hole test joint and the pressure was applied where I'm pushing my fingers and if you look closely you'll see there's a little bit of lifting right at the very joint there but if you look down below you can see that also the the uh, the wood failed now when I turn it around I think I already showed you that for this one I did three pocket holes because there was enough room to do that in there and I was concerned putting three pocket holes that it might split the wood but it didn't split the wood and what I often do, depending on what the wood looks like, I will often do this, is put a clamp right there on that area, and that will stop the wood from splitting. And in a case where, especially where there's three, I would move that clamp all the way along each time. I did not have to do that in this case, but you can see where that failed. Now, a lot of people ask me, did I glue the joint? No, I did not glue the joint. In fact, we're going to today take it apart so that you can see exactly what I did. So you can see that there was no um, no glue there. In fact, didn't need to because even glued or not glued, the wood actually failed. So, but the other thing that I think is important that, that I did want to mention on this is I use the coarse screws for everything. I know the manufacturer suggests um, with some hardwoods using the fine thread. And I don't know if you can see the difference there. Move it over there so you can maybe see better there. Now, Anyway, um, I don't use, I, I rarely ever use the fine thread, and I don't know why they recommend this. I, I've always found that it strips, no matter what wood I put it in, I often strip it. Maybe I'm too ruthless with it. But for this test, I used the coarse thread, which is why um, when you're using a number of pocket holes together, especially with coarse thread, it's a good idea to use a clamp. So. Just to clear up that little point, uh, and then, of course they're all three um, coarse threaded uh, screws there. As you recall, I refurbished a plane, I, and I really like this little plane, a number three Stanley, but I wanted to get a new blade for it. Now, I know a number of you commented that why didn't I just hammer the, the uh, existing blade um, and save myself a few dollars rather than um, trying to you know, purchase a new one and install it, which is exactly what I'm going to do today. Um, and you know what? I could have done that. I have done that in the past, and, and it's been relatively successful, but I just found that when you replace these blades, it just, there's something about hand planing with a good quality blade that really makes a difference. I've never purchased these one of these blades before, so normally when I purchase third-party blades, they they come out of the package. They're super, um, they're super um, sharp. So I'm hoping this one's going to be the same. 
and it is it's quite a bit well it's not it actually it's a little bit thicker it's not a lot thicker I was hoping that would be a lot thicker than that normally when I've bought these but let's take the blade the existing blade out and let's have a look and see Yeah, there's, yeah, I can feel the difference there. there is. So it's a little bit thicker, and it is super sharp. Okay, so let's measure these. And in inches, the new plane is 7 sixty-fourths. The old plane blade, plane blade, is 330 seconds. So let's go back and do that in millimeters. So in millimeters the old blade is 2.40 the new one is 2.75. So not a huge difference but you know what I can just I can actually feel let's turn that off I can actually feel the difference. So, uh, to be honest, I was expecting a little bit thicker blade, but I've never tried one of these Veritas blades before. I've already paid for it. So, let's go ahead and put it together, and uh, we'll give it a whirl and see what it's like. Yeah, that's better. Well, getting nice fine cuts, and uh, well, it is what it is. Well, like any good woodworker, uh, try the tool out first, then read the instructions. Um, they're saying it's sharp and ready to use unless the face has been scratched, which of course it hasn't. Um, the blade has been ground to 16, 16 microns. What they're suggesting is that the blade probably should still be lapped or should still be polished in order to get a perfect, um, a perfect um, sharpness to it. And of course we didn't do that. You saw me take it out of the package and put it into the plane. So I think I'll do that and um, hopefully it'll uh, work a little bit better than it is right now. It's working fine but it's not more working that much better than what I had hoped. Uh, that much better than the other ones. So, anyway, let's move along to the hand planer. A few people commented that I didn't talk about the sharpening of these blades and or of these little electric hand planes. And you know what? I uh, in the video, the original video, I actually took this off and did a bit of sharpening on one blade. And then when I went to editing, I thought. Oh, it's going to be too long. Uh, nobody's going to be interested in this part of it and shows you how wrong I can be sometimes. So, let's talk about sharpening. Basically, this kind of, uh, we already know the other one, how you just um, push a, a new blade through, but on these kinds where you actually have a little blade that takes off, not unlike one of these hand planes, it's just a a little bit wider version and narrower. Um, so these three screws to take this off and then you get the plane, the blade out and you sharpen that blade, either you get it sharpened commercially uh, or you can do it yourself with, there's a variety of blade sharpening devices out there and I'm not going to get into that because uh, I've already put a link on the, the site where you can, uh, where I've done some sharpening. To reinstall it, what's important is that this blade be equal to the, I guess this is the out, we would call that the outfeed table. And what we do basically is use some kind of a straight edge, and you can use a piece of wood or whatever works for you. And, and you don't need to be super critical, not like, a, not like your... Um, tool your jointer um, but get that and it's not that difficult to do to get that blade to line up with that that outfeed table just like that and you can see how that's just grazing that and when you do that then you 
These are already been snugged up so that that blade won't move and then you just tighten that up and that's all there is to uh, sharpening and setting the blades on this. Um, so not really that difficult to do and uh, I, you, I guess you'll comment if you need more information but I'm pretty sure that most of you would be able to figure that out. Uh, just make very very sure that uh, of course you're unplugged. And that's it for the hand plane. Well, that concludes our video for today, and I'll, I'll be honest with you, I've been on a little bit of a holiday. I've taken a little bit of time off, so I was working hard to get all of those, all of these videos done um, so that you would watch them, be able to watch them while I was away, um, taking a little bit of R&R, &R, so um, maybe that's why we missed a few things here and uh, didn't, weren't quite as complete as I could. Anyway, you've seen it all now. We've got it all fixed up. I'm Colin Kadaff for Woodwork Web. Thanks for watching. If you haven't already subscribed, we ask you to do that. And don't forget, a lot of these uh, videos that we make, uh, most of these videos have an article on Woodwork Web. And the link is in the description box right underneath these videos so you can get easy access to it. So don't forget, subscribe if you haven't already done that. Follow us on Twitter, like us on Facebook. I'm Colin Kadaff for Woodwork Web. Thanks for watching.